Overnight, the U.S. launched another series of strikes against Houthi rebels in Yemen. This follows Thursday's targeted strikes by the U.S. and the U.K. on 60 different sites in the Houthi-controlled western part of Yemen. The Houthi rebels have been attacking a vital international shipping route in the Red Sea for several weeks. President Biden noted in a statement that the Houthi attacks on commercial vessels in the Red Sea jeopardize trade and that, quote, more than 2,000 ships have been forced to divert thousands of miles to avoid the Red Sea, which can cause weeks of delay in product shipping times. I want to take a look at this shipping route and what's been going on in the Red Sea. The Houthi attacks on freight ships are happening here at the bottom of the screen. You can see the Bab al-Mandab Strait. Uh, it's the only way for ships from the east coming through the Gulf of Aden to get uh, into the Arabian Sea and ultimately get into the Suez Canal. Now, right here, the Suez Canal, which you can see toward the top of the screen, it's one of the most important shipping passages in the world. Even in 2024, ocean shipping remains the beating heart of global trade, and the Suez Canal is one of the important major arteries. Arteries. Last time I talked to you about the Suez Canal was in 2021 when a colossal container ship got jammed in the passage, blocking the waterway for six days. Now, the Suez Canal rivals the newly opened Arctic Passage as one of the quickest routes, routes between Asia and Europe. 17,000 ships carrying a trillion dollars worth of goods pass through it every year. That's 12 percent of annual global trade, according to Lloyd's List, a global shipping news outlet. But the Houthi attacks have forced shipping companies to reconsider using this vital route. At least six of the 10 biggest shipping companies in the world have either decreased the number of ships they send through the Red Sea or diverted their entire fleet from the area. And after U.S.-led strikes in the area began on Thursday, even more ships are diverting from the route. So what's plan B? Well, for one, these shipping companies could keep using the gate of Mandab Strait and the Red Sea but that risks their ships being attacked by the Houthi rebels and would come at a steep price. The cost to ship containers through that passage has skyrocketed. According to Drury, which is a London-based shipping analysis firm, in the week of November 21st, when the attacks began, it cost $1,148 to ship a 40-foot container from Taiwan to the Netherlands. That's just a good example of a place in, in the East and a place in Europe. Ships hold thousands of these 40-foot containers, fueled in part by a sharp jumps, jump in insurance premiums, prices are now at $4,406 per container. It's almost four times as expensive. Many shipping companies are going with a safer option and diverting most of their ships. So where are they sending them? Well, the most viable alternative, especially in winter in the Northern Hemisphere, is to go all the way around the Cape of Good Hope and go past South Africa at the very bottom of Africa. But take a look at how much longer this journey around the Cape of Good Hope is compared to passing through the Suez Canal and the Red Sea. It would add seven to 10 days to the trip. The ships are going to face more extreme weather conditions sailing down uh, the, the east side of Africa and up the west side of Africa than they would in the Red Sea. And these sorts of delays can have knock-on effects for the global economy. The shipping industry today works on what's called a just-in-time basis. Ships are meant to reach their ports exactly on schedule, port space is limited, so even one late boat can trigger a domino effect. Diversions like this can mean delays in consumer goods, log jams at ports, and increased shipping costs, which translate to longer wait times and higher prices for consumers. The longer the issue remains, the more adverse its effects are going to be. IKEA has already warned of product shortages. Companies like Tesla and Volvo have paused production at some of their factories to avoid having a backlog of supplies. But some experts say this won't be as bad as the impact of COVID era, supply chain, COVID era supply chain issues because fleet capacity is higher. There are more ships. The shipping rates we've seen in recent weeks are still much lower than what we saw in January of 2022 during the peak of COVID-related supply chain issues. By the way, the U.S.-led military response to Houthi attacks on the Red Sea is not without economic consequence itself. U.S. crude oil prices jumped four and a half percent on Friday morning as a response to these strikes.